via the Coward Global Satellite Network. Bill Romanowski, a four-time Super Bowl champ. Okay, I want you, Bill, compare the first Super Bowl you ever went to to the last Super Bowl you went to. How much more prepared? Did it change your preparation? Did it change your anxiety? You know what? It was night and day. I came into the NFL, got drafted, Colin, and my first year with San Francisco, we go to the Super Bowl and win. I had no idea what I was doing. (laughs) Well, hey, fast forward 16 years later, and I'm playing for the Oakland Raiders. I was so dialed in to play against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and we end up losing the game. I had one of my best games ever, but still, we lost the game. And you talk about hurt, you talk about pain, nothing worse than losing a Super Bowl. Um, You know, for for a team like the Patriots that's been here before, their system over star, whereas the Rams are young, they've got several stars. I almost think there's a disadvantage to having a lot of stars on your roster in a Super Bowl because that's where the media gloms on to. Whereas the Patriots have one, Tom Brady, and he pretty much hides from the media. Go back to your Super Bowl teams. Some had more stars than others. Did that matter? You know what? It's funny because in San Francisco, that's what we had. We had Hall of Famers, we had stars, and we had a lot of them. You went, you go to our Denver Bronco team. We had stars, but what we really had, we had John Elway, and we had a bunch of blue-collared guys that brought their lunch pail to work every day and went out there and played football hard for one another. If I kind of compare that that team, that Denver Bronco team, I feel like it was a lot like the New England Patriots because the New England Patriots are a team. They are the ultimate team. They do it with less talent. Other than one position, and that's the quarterback position. You know, it's funny because I always thought you you are Belichick's sort of guy. High-functioning, intense, no BS. You go look at guys he's picked up from other NFL teams. They've got the accolades. They're high-functioning. You know, take me you, – you've never played for the Patriots, but when you watch them – is there a little bit of jealousy thinking, God, this would have been this would have been a perfect fit for me? I would have absolutely given anything to play for Bill Belichick, for his Patriots. I absolutely love what they do. I have so much respect for him. I have so much respect for Tom Brady. I actually have turned into a New England Patriot fan other than when they play the Raiders. But, uh, you know... What I like is they out-game plan people, and they get guys to buy in to do what they do. And they are, I would say, other than one position, just a good group of players. But that one guy, Tom Brady, makes the rest of the group great. I want to shift to the Saints and the Rams. Now, obviously, you've played in games. Uh, When you go on the road, it's imperfect. Sometimes at home you get the call. Sometimes on the road you don't. Saints were at home, and there was a call at the end of the game. It was a bad call. You you can't deny that. But my takeaway takeaway in life is if you dwell on bad situations, they'll affect you the next year the next game. I wish the Saints would move on emotionally. What do you make of the Saints, the lawsuits, the billboards, the outrage? What do you make of it? You know, I I, I feel their pain because that truly, I think, determined the outcome of the football game. And to me, I think it's up to the NFL to figure out a way around this where maybe a call like that with under two or three minutes left in the game, you're able to actually reverse the call. Yeah. I think this one is up to the NFL, Colin, because you hate to see 
a, a team like the Saints not being in the Super Bowl because a referee messed up a call at a pivotal time in that football game. Yeah, I've always had a feeling, Romo, my, my rule was, it's called the umbrella rule, that with three minutes left in a football game, not two, because two you may not have enough time, and not four, that's too many, but with three minutes left, there's an umbrella rule where the league can step in and say, we're just reviewing that. Uh, and I think in this instance, it would have obviously helped the Saints. I want to shift to one Raiders question with you, Bill Romanowski. He's joining us, nutrition53.com slash lean one bar. One Raider question. I keep hearing about Gruden because you've worked on the Raider broadcast. I keep hearing about Derek Carr. My theory is Derek Carr, you can win a lot of games if you give him a defense and an O-line. I'm reading stories like John Gruden doesn't like Derek Carr. Can you give us, Bill, some clarity on that? Yeah, say, here's what I would say about John Gruden, because I know John well, is John likes tough, hard-nosed football players. When, you, when I think of a quarterback that was perfect for John Gruden, Rich Gannon. Yeah. Does Carr fit that mold? No. And because he, hey, the guy can make every throw on the field, Colin, but I just don't think he is Gruden's guy. Okay. And because of that, I think there's going to be, I would say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be uh, surprised if there was a change at that position because that is the key to the Raiders really changing this thing. Oh, I want to throw one more question at you. You know defense very well. Wade Phillips. Yep. Wade Phillips has always sort of been a, this is my defense. I'm not going to change it much guy. I don't love that against Belichick, Brady, and Josh McDaniels. In fact, I think the edge in this game goes to New England, not on Belichick McVay. I think the edge for New England is on Josh McDaniels against Wade Phillips, who tends to have a defense and not, you know, he doesn't make a lot of moves. Any thoughts on that being a disadvantage for the Rams? You know, I, I think you're right. I, I think when it comes to a situation where you're playing, probably you're really playing the best coaching staff yeah. in the National Football League. And when you play against the best coaching staff, and if you have to make a tweak and it goes against what you normally like to do, well, shame on you. Because this is a game where somehow, some way, they've got to be able to get pressure up the middle. Nobody has been able to pressure Brady in the playoffs thus far. And if they don't get pressure up the middle, if Donald and Sue don't show up and play the game of their life, they don't have a prayer because New England will pick them apart. Is there a way, if you were, if you were a coordinator and we're going up against Brady, is there a way, I mean, or do you, when you, when you, Bill, in your career faced all time greats, is it a lot of crossing your fingers? Is there a way to disrupt Tom that you've seen? You know what? There's only one way to really disrupt him. And like I said, you got to get pressure on him because if, when he's not under pressure, his quarterback rating is over 100. Mm -hmm. When he is under pressure, Colin, his quarterback rating is at 70. He turns into an average quarterback when he is pressured. It's no different than other quarterbacks. But other quarterbacks usually have a quarterback rating of 60, 50, 40 when you put pressure on them. So the key to this is one thing. You have to be able to get to the kingpin, and that's Tom Brady. Uh, his uh, site is nutrition53.com slash lean1bar. I, th I see he's got a Smoothie King uh, right in front of him. It's a great product, Bill. I love it. And you, you look like, by the way, the best meal I've ever had at a Super Bowl was with Bill and his wife. It was about two years ago. It almost sent me to the hospital. I ate so much. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> so I remember it kindly in Houston. And, Bill, it's great talking to you again. Hey, love you, Colin. Take care. You bet. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.